So QWERTY, it's simple. You have a simple one uh, vertex diagram. So that's it. Um, I guess you can practice on your own if you want. <laughs> um, what I want to spend more time with, that's uh, way more interesting, is the two other interactions. The weak interaction and the strong interaction. Because that involves additional physics that we haven't actually discussed yet. And I think we have just enough time to tell you what's involved here. So let me redraw the interaction, the Feynman diagram for the weak interaction that I drew last Thursday. And I, when I drew it, I said this is not the actually correct diagram, but I drew it as um, kind of illustration of uh, Fermi's theory of a weak decay. So the weak interaction the early version looked like this. Let me do this as an example. A decay of, um, decay of a neutron into proton, electron, and neutrino. The way it was done was, well, you have a particle coming in, neutron, that decays into proton. So um, uh, decays into proton. And in the process, it emits an electron. And uh, it emits an electron antineutrino. Right? And this is what's called contact interaction. And th the contact interaction has an issue. It's sort of like almost any contact interaction. It's like, you know, we, in physics 4A, we describe this kind of interaction as contact interaction. But as you get into smaller and smaller scale, you realize it's not really a contact interaction. This push here, this is an interaction mediated by a photon. Right? It's an electromagnetic interaction. So there's some virtual photon mediating, pushing of my hand on the table. Um, so with the weak interaction, as you go into higher energy scale, uh, that discrepancy becomes clearer. That when you mo continue to model this as contact interaction, the cross section for the interaction goes to infinity. You get another ultraviolet catastrophe. And you have to introduce a force mediator to avoid that. So I think I drew this much last time. The real version is that this emits a W boson, which it decays into these two. I think I, W minus, <laughs> I drew this last time, right? Yeah. So let me draw, give you the elementary vertexes for the weak interaction. And in the process, I'm going to really need to introduce three more particles. Actually, two more, because one of them is, two of them are antiparticle of each other. So. Let me draw the three, three. Let me draw the two, um, the elementary vertexes. There's technically three, but once again, one of them is antiparticle version of the other. So uh, I guess I'll continue to use this pen. So the, oh, you know what? Actually, there are three. Sorry, I, I do need to draw three. So there's a version of a weak interaction that involves leptons. For example, electron and neutrino or muon and muon neutrino. So that interaction would look like, let me draw it the way I drew this. Um, so actually, let me turn this around. I don't kind of like how this looks. Um, I think it's, uh, for comparison purposes, it's a lot easier if I have this version instead. So that it's kind of, you know, Particle, antiparticle, turning into force mediator. That's the easier version to uh, um, parallel, do it in parallel. So um, one kind of weak elementary vertex looks like, well, I have an electron coming in, antineutrino coming in. So I have a lepton coming in. And I have an antilepton coming in. So an, not antilepton. The lepton, antineutrino. So neutrino of the version associated with the lepton, but the anti-version of it. They annihilate and they form, um, I think usually people draw this with a zigzag. W boson, this is one of the bosons, force mediator particles involved in the weak interaction. So let me start to add them, W boson. Um, what are some properties of this W boson that you can infer? just from the fact that all the conservation laws must hold here. Mm. 
what do you know about the lepton and the neutrino? Like some of their. Yeah, this must have a charge because lepton has a charge and neutrino doesn't have a charge. So the lepton, the particle version, has a negative charge. So that means this boson, W boson, must have a charge of a minus. So the W boson, there's a one that has minus charge. Now, if there's one that has minus charge, then you just turn it into antiparticles, and there's a version that has positive charge. So uh, there's plus and minus boson. So that's one, uh, one of the elementary vertexes involving weak interaction. The second, it, um, at first sight, it wouldn't look different from this, because I'm going to have W boson again. Here's going to be another W boson. So what's different is not the, the force mediator, but what's different is the interacting particles. So um, it comes down back to the idea of approximate conservation of all these quantities. And the only interaction where the strangeness, charmness, and the bottom and top, where these have been discovered to be violated is weak interaction. So just like this interaction turns a lepton into neutrino, we can have, we should have interaction that turns, um, I don't know, that turns a down quark into up quark, or strange quark into charm quark, or bottom quark into top quark. So that's the second set of, uh, second set of uh, vertexes. So let's say, let me call this one of the, no, I think I actually have to name them because it's not quark and anti-quark. It's not the same version of the quark that's there. It's for example, if this is up quark, no, sorry. If this is down quark, then what's coming in here has to be anti-up quark. Can you check for yourself that the charge conservation holds at this vertex? Yes. Charge of minus one third comes in. Charge of minus two thirds comes in. Turns into charge of minus one. Yeah. So that's the second vertex. Um, it still involves the same W boson. Um, and there's a third one that I have to uh, tell you about. How do I explain this? Uh, I think Samir in your textbook probably talks about this. Um, it kind of is involved with direct detection of neutrino. Suppose you're looking for uh, interaction where neutrino is involved. Let's see, is that? Let me just draw it. I think it's easier to do it this way. Um, so there's a third kind of weak interaction, uh, weak force carrier. It's what's called G boson or the neutral G boson. It has no charge. It carries a weak charge, so it mediates uh, weak interactions. And um, because it carries no charge, it cannot be involved in interactions like these two. If a lepton changes into neutrino, or a one type of quark into another type, that must involve a change of charge. So with this G boson, the only thing it can be involved in our interactions, for example, like this. Uh, neutrino coming in, and um, antineutrino coming in. So you can see a neutrino, neutrino scattering, or neutrino, antineutrino scattering, mediated by Z boson. Not, well, it's not easy to see, but it can happen. <laughs> um, so these are weak interaction vertexes. And 